Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to talk about streams. Okay, in the past, remember we talked about futures. Now, just to, as an example, refresher, future int, future int, um, using the async keyword so that when we're returning an integer, it's actually not an integer, it's a future, right? So when we remember this, and when we call this function itself, we return a future that wraps over an integer. But once we return this value, we're done, right? It's all completed and it's end of story. What if you wanted to return multiple values? Not, not like a list. So that's a list, right, is one way to return multiple values. But what you want to return is a value when it's available, and then another when it's available, and then another when it's available, and keep returning them as they become available. That's what we call a stream, okay? Now, a stream is like a future in the sense that it happens sometime in the future. It's not an immediate type of thing that occurs. We've dealt with future, I mean, streams before. Do you remember in the uh, past, we would say like input element um, E equals query selector. Um, and we would say something like we would give the ID and hello or something like that. This is not valid code because I didn't import dark, dart HTML, okay? But if we remember that, then we would do something like e.onclick.listen. Do you remember that? So there are two parts of a stream. There is the sending of the information, and there is the receiving of the information, right? Now, remember with a future, there was no actual sending of the information, and it was not actually receiving information. What you were doing is that if you had like a future, you would simply say that future future thing dot then, right? So you would actually activate the future. Let's just pretend that variable represents that future you were looking for dot then, and then you're doing something with it. A stream is different. A stream is something where you have a listening and a sending information. Now, you have to send the information, of course, but you also have to listen for it as well. And when you're listening for it, you might not get any information at all. There might be no information, but the information might come at any given time. So that's the difference between a listen and a then. So I hope that makes sense. So a then, you're actually activating it, but the value might not come for the future for some time. A stream, a listen, is you're listening for it, and you have no idea if it's going to come or not, but at least you're there listening for it, okay? So if you actually do the onclick.listen, what you're doing is you're opening up a stream at that time. So dark code runs a lot through, and it runs, and it hits this, and it opens up a stream. And so that's the listening part. You, when, or your customer or whatever, when you click on the HTML element, you're actually completing the stream, okay? So that's getting some information, um, opening it up, and getting some information in the future. And once you click on that, you complete the stream, and the stream closes completely, okay? So it's kind of like that connection gets severed after you, oh, you complete that stream. Now, you might think, oh, wait a minute, how is that different from a future? And in this context, it's different from a future, just like I mentioned, because you're, you're not activating anything. That activation may or may not happen in the future. You're just open to listening. But in, the, in other circumstances, streams may send you more than one bit of information at any given time. And that's something that we have to keep in mind. I, I made a very super simple example right here. For example, what do I want to do? What I want to do is get a list or get any type of iterable, and I want to get the send or receive information as chunks of information. So remember a list, you don't return, you don't have to return only one thing, you can, but you could return multiple things. So what I want to do is I want to get a list of numbers, and I want to be able to return them back to me in a form, in, a, in, a, in order. This one num, then this number, then this number, then this number, and just going down the line. So it's not a list. I'm not receiving the whole thing at the same time. I'm receiving one, then the next, then the next, then the next. And that's why we have to use a stream and not a future or anything else. So let's create a stream. Very basic, very simple. Remember, we're just starting from the beginning here. 
stream int. Okay, so stream is the type wrapping around an int, an integer, right? Test stream, that's just the name of the stream. Iterable, iterable. I don't think I've used that before. I, maybe I have, but iterable is kind of like num, okay? Num, you use num as the type when you don't know if it's a double or a int, right? Iterable, you use that if you don't know if the iterable is a list, list, or a set. Um, you can't use map because map looks a little bit differently, but if it's an int or, I mean, a list or a cent, set, then you could just use an iterable, and they're going to have values right here being int. And it's going to be called just stuff to stream. Keyword, async. Notice the asterisk. So async will be future. Async asterisk is going to be iter um, stream. Okay? And then we're going to do a for. Int i, because I know it's an int. You can always use var right inside of here if you don't know what this value is. But... Most of the time, we're, we're going to type as much as possible. Remember from before, we want to let the computer help us out in stuff to stream. So in other words, int i, it will represent the first thing in stuff to stream, second, third, and it'll keep going through and keep iterating throughout. Okay, I don't think I've really reinforced that in the past, that the concept of iterables, the whole point is to go to run through them in an ordered type of fashion. And that's the easy way, easiest way to do it. I'm really sorry, by the way, if I keep repeating myself and being super basic and fundamental because that's the only way that I learn. So if it's really redundant to you and annoying, I really am sorry. That's mostly for me, though, just to keep repeating the basics over and over again because that's the only way that I personally learn. And I have to go through this over and over again, okay? So yield I. Yield is instead of return. Remember, if you hit a return, that just closes everything up. So you're, you're done with that particular function. Yield basically says, okay, I got some bit of information. I'm sending it back. I'm basically returning it. But I got more stuff coming. I'm going to return it. I'm going to return it. So what it should do is if I introduce stream, type stream, file stream is my variable, test stream right here, and I'm going to insert my list right inside of here. So this list is going to come down right inside of here. And then I'm going to say file stream dot listen. And then I'm going to have an int e, the each individual value, and then I'm going to print each individual one. Let's see what happens. So it prints each individual one right inside of here, right? So this is not a list any longer. It's not one of the variables. It's all of the variables at different times. So that's what a stream does. You see, so it sends it sends each characteristic through and through. Once it's done, it's done, and then the stream closes. After this is finished, it listens. After we're all done through it, it closes, and the stream is done. Okay? So that's streams in the very most basic sense. We'll go over it a little bit more when we start doing other types of things in the next few videos, but I just wanted to get the basics. And, and just keep in mind that whenever you do, do a listen. So you always have to have a stream, something that sends the stream information. Again, maybe it's you doing the click. Maybe it's some function that's sending out information, whatever that actually is. You have to listen for it. And then when you listen for it, you get b b bunches of inf information and you could do something with it. So a stream is something where it may or may not happen in the future. Um, it, it is something that sends multiple bits of data. Those are the two characteristics. And that's why you would use those as opposed to a future or a standard synchronous function. Okay, I hope that's clear. Let's keep moving on. If you have any questions, if it's not clear, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Thank you.